Hello, my name is Robert Martin and I'm pretty passionate about human rights and especially those in Palestine, the Palestinian human rights. Now before I actually get started, I should make everyone aware that there's nothing significant that brought me to the Palestinian plight. I'm not Jewish, I'm not Palestinian, I'm not Arab, I'm not Muslim. I'm an atheist who started seeing things that just didn't add up. I started seeing things in the media and the paper always saying that Palestinians were terrorists and also that Israel was always defending itself. And then the last Gaza strike a number of years ago, I started to really read. I read about what was happening and I reached out to a lot of people in Palestine. People then used to say, you've got no idea, you've never been, you've never seen. So I actually went over a number of years ago and was shocked with what I saw, absolutely shocked. And came back a different person and vowed to help the Palestinian cause for the rest of my life. I went over again only a few months ago and thought I knew a lot of it, but I was shocked. I was absolutely shocked at what I saw. A number of things that I witnessed, I went to a few refugee camps. Now, the fact that there's refugee camps within Palestine, in their own country, should alarm anybody that has any idea or no idea of what's going on, because it's not right. I spent time in Ada refugee camp. Ada refugee camp is in Bethlehem not far from Jerusalem. None of those people can actually go to Jerusalem. They're not allowed to. Their ID cards don't allow them to go. One particular gentleman I spoke to had a scholarship to go to Jerusalem University. The fact was that he didn't have an ID to get in there, so he snuck in. The university said, how did you get here? He told them the truth. So automatically they actually said, you can't come, and he can't study in that side of town again. I spoke to so many children in the refugee camps and I was heartbroken, heartbroken with what I saw and what I heard. These refugee camps aren't very big. Four out of seven nights, the IDF will come through round about 6 a.m. for this particular camp, 6 a.m. in the morning. They don't knock on doors, they kick them in. There's anywhere between 50 and 100 soldiers The reason they do this is because they don't want the Palestinians to rest. They don't want them to sleep at night. They don't want them to have joy. They don't want them to have their children to stay innocent. Some of these soldiers come with face painted, face painting for war. You think they're going out to a war zone. They're leaving their homes at night, getting in to tanks, jeeps, they've got M16s, all made in America. They have stun grenades, pepper spray, tear gas. And they go into these homes and they rip the kids out of bed. They take these kids away from their parents. Some of these kids are 14 under. We never hear about them until there is a particular family or a particular situation where the world thinks that they need to actually start listening. Well, the fact is this happens every single day. Every day, I met kids that had been shot. And these kids are timid kids. They're not rough kids. But these kids have seen their mums and their dads, their brothers, their cousins, either murdered, bashed, seen their mums abused, seen their mums be spat on. And these kids can't do anything. They don't have any weapons. Occasionally, they will throw stones. I would. They can get 20 years for doing this, for 20 years for throwing stones. And these are kids that are getting demonised, dehumanised, abused. A human being needs to see light at the end of the tunnel. A human being needs to have passion and hope. Well, Israel doesn't want any of the Palestinians to have this. They call every single Palestinian a terrorist. How do I know this? because I spent time with a professor, Nurit Pellet Elian, who had written a book on the Israeli education system. And I did an interview, and please look it up, it's Robert Martin and Nurit, because she told me that from the age of three, the Israeli education system is geared to make the Palestinians look terrible, to make the Palestinians look as though they are encroaching on their land. In all of the education books in Israel, 
There's no West Bank. It's Judea and Samira, which is God gave them that land. So if you teach your children from that early age that this is my land and the Palestinians are terrorists, what are they going to do when they get a gun? They go in there and they kill these children. They kill these Palestinian kids that are like you and I. These Palestinian kids want to live. Palestinians do not want charity. The Palestinians just want what you and I want, which is to be left alone, to either have Christmas or any way that they celebrate, to have birthday parties, to be able to attend a funeral without being shot at. Because the amount of times that the funerals are attacked by Israel is numerous. They don't even allow the Palestinians to grieve. I spoke to soldiers. I spoke to young Israeli Jewish kids in Jerusalem. I asked, what do you think of Palestinians? And the answers that I got made me sick. The answers I got were, what are Palestinians? What is Palestine? They're terrorists. They're dirty terrorists. They stink. They smell. And I asked all of them, have you spent time with one? Why would I do that? Why would I do that, these guys say? Well, the day the refugee camp, they come in at six. Let me tell you what the IDF do, the rest of the Palestinian areas, you know, the West Bank. They come in between two and three in the morning, two and three in the morning, anywhere between 20, 40, up to 100 soldiers. They will kick the door in. Mum and dad will get up. They'll take the kids out. They remove the kids from the house. They blindfold them and they handcuff them. This is against international law. But why does Israel have to come in between 2 and 3 in the morning? It's pretty obvious. Because they want to intimidate them, dehumanise them, scare them, and have them living on edge. They want the Palestinians to resist so they can shoot them and kill them. And this is what continually happens. I also was told, and I've Googled it since, Israelis that kill Palestinians do not serve much time in jail at all. They either get let off or they'll spend a little bit of time at home. The government will actually lobby to have them out. They do not spend much time in jail. So they go up from growing as young kids from the age of three that Palestinians are on their own land, that Palestinians are living in Judea and Shamir and they're terrorists and all they want to do is kill us. Then they get given a gun. And when they kill a Palestinian, they get let off or they become a hero. They become a hero for killing Palestinians. You tell me who the terrorists are. What are the Palestinians to do? They go to the courts. They go to the UN. They try anything. Yes, they did do violence many, many years ago. But what would you do? I know what I would do if I had seen my mother, my father, my sister, my brother beaten or killed had my land stolen, had my house taken, and then I'm blamed for being a terrorist. Administrative detention is another thing that they do to these kids. And there's some pretty high-profile ones in jail at the moment. One slapped a soldier. And it's funny to hear the pro-Israel side say, oh my goodness, you slapped a soldier. The question to be asked is, why is the soldier there? It's a Palestinian area. It is deemed Palestinian. Nabi Saleh. I spent time with a family. Bassem Tamimi and his family, three of those four people are in jail today. One will have another court case tomorrow, which is New Year's Eve. They're going to keep extending that. They have had people in the Knesset. And the Knesset, for those that don't know, is the government. So they're, they're government, they're politicians. And they've actually called for, they should spend the rest of their life in jail. These are terrorists, that's no good. One of the reporters, one of the biggest reporters over there has actually written saying that basically they should be raped. These are kids. These are kids. And so it's really easy to look. If you look at both sides, one is occupying the other. One wants their freedom. The other wants their land and without them in there. I went over there with an open mind a couple of years ago because I really wanted to learn the truth. I travelled all through the West Bank. I travelled with Jewish people as well. And the reason I have to put there is there's a lot of people saying, oh my goodness, the Jews can't go through there. They can go through there. 
I've been told I look Jewish. I don't always wear a kaffir and I don't always wear a shirt. I went through to these areas with Jewish friends of mine and we were welcomed. I often asked, what do you think of the Jews? And I was so quickly told it's not the Jews we have a problem, it's the Zionists. All we want is our land back. All we want to do is be left in peace. The Palestinians have accepted a one state many, many years ago. Israel didn't want it. Israel doesn't want a two state. Well, the fact is today, it is already a one state. One state that Israel are trying to make entirely theirs. Boycott, divestment and sanctions is a good way to start. But one thing that I get frustrated is, and I try and post on all social medias because I have to do it. I have to do it. I have to help. They're my friends there. Every time I read the paper and I see things, I get so upset and worked up because they're my friends and I can't do anything. We need to reach out above our circles, beyond our circles. We need to send clips to the newspapers. Hit all the big websites that have, you know, CNN, NBC, all of these ones that talk about only Israel. Take some clips that you see and put them all on these news sites. Because governments don't change communities. People do. Now, the world is waking up. The world is waking up to the propaganda that Israel's been doing for so long. And I look forward to it changing. The last 14 days, over 500 kids have been arrested. Many killed. Do you hear about that on the news? No. So it's our job to do that. Our job as activists is to help the Palestinian voices be heard. My job is to make sure that everyday Australians, everyday Americans know the truth so they can make an informed decision. I hope everyone has a good Christmas. I hope everyone has a good New Year. Let's do something for the Palestinians, for their kids, because I'm sick to death of their kids having their innocence stolen. Not only their land, it's their innocence. These are beautiful people. They're not terrorists. Happy New Year.